Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for to make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. After attending college together for several years, Sam, John, Mark and Ross have become great friends. Roommates Mark and Sam shared a front apartment with John and Ross, who lived in the back. They were always in close proximity to one another, no matter what. After finishing college, the group decided to stay in New York City and rent two apartments, identical to the ones they had when they were in college, and in the same sequence, with Mark and Sam residing in one apartment and John and Ross residing in the other, as they'd done previously. On a daily basis, after finishing their work, the group would congregate at a coffee shop or in one of their apartments to speak about anything and everything, including their jobs, upcoming weekend activities, personal relationships, and children. Having each other's backs was important to the group of pals. If one of them wants to apply for a new job, they'll encourage him to do so. If someone has a love problem, they'll all provide advice. And if someone wants to talk about his difficulties, they'll all be willing to hear him. The four friends were so pleased with their special bond that they decided to let their code of conduct run its course. Everyone's free to do whatever he or she wants with his or hers, with the one condition that they always remain in those two apartments with each other. They wished to spend their golden years with each other just as they had grown up. Everything was going according to plan. They were having the best time together and they felt like time was passing them by without noticing them at all. Everyone else they knew was getting older, everyone but them, and they were still the same four beautiful young boys who were in college at the time. Ross informed them one day that he had met this gorgeous and attractive girl and that he was sharing his experiences with the rest of the group. It was just for a few weeks that this gorgeous girl named Maria, who's a Spanish girl, was in New York for her job. The first time Ross told his friends about her, they thought she was the perfect lady for someone in their position. A wonderful and attractive girl who doesn't want a commitment, who's just in New York for business, and who simply wants to have a good time. Ross was right. Once again, the group was mistaken. Ross truly loves Maria, and she reciprocated his feelings, so she continued to communicate with him even after her departure for Spain, and the trip to New York City during which she met Ross was not her final trip to the city. The next year, Maria traveled to New York on several occasions, mostly to spend time with Ross for the weekend or for a week at the most. The fact that she had no job back in Spain prevented her from any stay any longer. In addition, Maria is a history lecturer at Madrid's Autonomous University. In order to spend more time with Ross, she couldn't go to New York to live with him, despite the fact that she and Ross had been working hard to find her a job in the Big Apple for some time. Even after realizing how much they care about each other, the gang predicts that Ross and Maria's romance would collapse soon. After all, no one can manage a healthy relationship while traveling abroad. Ross was also telling them everything, so they were aware that even if they continued to see one another, Ross would still be in New York, living in the apartment with his roommate. And the most important thing to remember is that their unique, friendly connection, which had been going on for years, would remain. After a while, Maria requested that Ross come to her in Madrid to meet her parents, which he did on the following day. In anticipation of his journey to Madrid, Ross was overjoyed. Previously, he'd never visited Spain, and more specifically, he'd never traveled to any part of Europe. When Ross was in the coffee shop with his buddies, he announced that he'd be traveling to Spain. I've never visited Europe before, so this is fantastic to me. I visited London once, but I've never gone to Spain, Sam confesses. We're all really enthusiastic about the trip, as you can tell, but when do you plan on leaving? John asked. Sorry, folks, but you misunderstood what I was saying. I intend to travel to Spain by myself, since Maria's requested that I visit her family. You can't go to Spain alone, though, because we usually travel together. You know how much I like this girl, so please accept my apologies on our behalf. It will not be fun without you. Obviously, we're all aware of this, but don't you believe that your connection with her is becoming more formal now that you've met her parents? And that sounds great. I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Ross, I know what you mean. John said, I was under the impression that you wanted to live with us for the rest of your days. The fact that I'll still be around has not changed, said Ross. There was no positive feeling for the group on this trip to Madrid, but they all decided that Ross was still their buddy and that he needed assistance and that they had the responsibility to provide for him as friends. Ross returned from his vacation to Spain after a week and gathered his buddies to share his experience with them. 
the pop on hop off Madrid sightseeing trip by open top double decker bus which Ross described as the perfect introduction to this magnificent city is the first thing I'd like to tell you about. Depending on your preference, you may purchase a one or two day ticket that allows you to board and exit at any of the stops along two connected lines, allowing you to explore the city at your own leisure. A wonderful tapas tour was also part of the experience. Tapas tour, John inquires. Our evening activities included wandering around the illuminated streets, sampling excellent tapas dishes at famous restaurants, and learning about the local produce, Ross said. The rest of what you've accomplished there appears to be entertaining. We visited the magnificent Royal Palace of Madrid, which is the most amazing location I've ever seen. The vast palace, which is made up of 2,800 rooms, is filled with masterpiece artwork, period decor, and architectural detail, Ross says. As well as that, we attended a flamenco performance. You keep telling us about Madrid, and while we understand that it's a beautiful place, we want to know what happened with Maria and how the family reunion went, Sam said. I liked Maria's parents as well, and they were quite friendly to me. Ross said, everything was wonderful. Mark said, thank you so much. Ross said, I want to thank you for your time and consideration. I also have some exciting news to share with you. That's exactly what we need right now, some fantastic news. The decision to marry Maria and I was unanimous. Nobody spoke for a moment. No one had ever imagined that one of their number might marry eventually. They'd already made their own commitments, but Ross was about to shatter them. I assumed you guys would be pleased for me, Ross replied after looking around. As much as we're pleased with your decision, we believe it's premature for you to be married at your age. You might describe us as young ten years ago, but now we're middle-aged guys who have lost their fathers to the war. The four of us are still the small kids that used to play together in the backyard, Mark said. In addition, Sam points out that we aren't alone since we have one another. John said, do you even remember that we have a code? We agreed on it when we were 21 years old, so of course I remembered. Our relationship meant a great deal to me. Mark, how do you intend to spend the remainder of your life with Maria as husband and wife, given that each of you is based in a separate country? Ross said, that's something we discussed, and it's really the second item I wanted to talk to you about today. The following is John's response to the question. A solution to the problem has been discovered. Maria said the problem was that we were always thinking about how she might relocate to New York, and that we had never considered going to Spain where I could find work quickly. His friends were not pleased with what he had just told them. In fact, they believed it would spell the end of their unique and special connection. However, they concluded that if it would make their buddy happy, they should continue to support him. After Ross got married and went to Spain, the group was never the same again. John was the first one to quit the group after Ross because he felt alone in the flat after Ross moved out, and so he moved in with his girlfriend to live with her. Mark and Sam were married a year later as well on the same day. When things changed, the group met once a year for the first five years, but after that it was impossible to get together since everyone had moved away, with just Sam and Mark remaining in New York. Ross contacted his friends 20 years after his marriage to inform them that he and his wife were relocating to New York to start a new business, and he had extended an invitation to them to all visit the newly acquired property. Although they were eager to get together again, the gang was at a loss as to where they should meet. When they arrived at the place that Ross had provided them with, they discovered that Ross's latest project was a traditional and opulent bathhouse, which they were delighted to discover. It was the Arabic bathhouse models that he visited in Spain that inspired Ross, he explained to his pals. Every member of the group gathered in the bathhouse to speak about their issues, just like they'd done in the past. But this time, everyone had a lot of problems to share with his or her pals. When we were always together, how come we didn't have any of those problems? For the simple reason that we had each other to chat with all the time. Now, Sam says, we have figured it out. Mark said, since we all reside in the same city once more, why can't we get together once a week so we can chat like witches and help each other succeed more easily? As agreed upon, I'll instruct them to reserve us this private room every weekend so that we may sit and speak as we're doing now. Everyone in the group agreed with Ross's suggestion, and since that time, the elderly have been permitted to spend as much time as they like in the bathhouse. However, they did not anticipate that it would be so effective in alleviating their difficulties. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.